Hi, welcome to the Yogi Teacher's Lab. I'm Mitchell Blyer. And today we're gonna to focus in on the legs. It's such a great part of a yoga practice. And I also think there's a lot of misconceptions about what it is to, to do yoga and to quote unquote stretch, especially when it comes to our legs and our hamstrings. You know, often I find that, you know, our goal is to think like touching the floor or being able to do the splits and having these really long muscles represents the, the success of your yoga practice. And often what happens is we can overstretch the muscle. Think of the muscle like a rubber band and it's elastic. If we just pull on that rubber band and stretch it, you know, to where it no longer responds by bouncing back, it's lost that elasticity. And so we're gonna look at the whole structure of the legs to open up all of it, especially the hamstrings we might have to look at getting the front of your thighs, your quadriceps to open up as well. Because often what we miss is if there's an area, like let's say your quads that, you know, aren't functioning in the best way, they're, they're not able to relax or to elongate and then come back, that could actually end up putting more stress or strain, or in other words, a greater workload on your hamstrings. So you're spending all this time in yoga stretching your hamstrings and the hamstrings don't necessarily feel like they're opening to the capacity they should be for the amount you're stretching. It might not be that your hamstrings are tight. There could be other parts of your body. So we're gonna look at the legs in this, this um, practice and hopefully it's gonna be accessible to anybody and you can modify as you need to or take things to some different deeper variations as you wish but we're gonna address the really the structure of your legs and um, I'm looking forward to it. So if you're ready, you can start kneeling facing the front of your mat like I am. And sit about like halfway uh, between, or halfway in, in your mat, okay? Take a few moments. If this isn't comfortable, you can always put something under your hips, uh, a block under your butt or a blanket or something like that. If you want to, you, you can even tuck your toes under. This might be pretty intense on your toes, but it might also be more accessible for your hips or for your feet. And if this gets too uncomfortable, just point your toes again. I actually think I'm gonna leave my toes tucked under for the moment. Let's take a couple moments to just locate what it's like to breathe. And if it's possible, close your mouth and breathe through your nose. And if it's possible, direct your breath to your diaphragm, to your belly. So as you breathe, you feel your belly move out on an inhale and in on an exhale. And it's a very nice, simple way to shift our nervous system from stressful state to a non-stressful state so that as we go and make changes in our body, which can produce stress, our system is at a place of connection, engagement, receptivity for that kind of change rather than wanting to reject it. As you're ready, if you had your toes tucked under, you can go ahead and um, point them if you wish. Or if you want to tuck them under, that'd be fine too. We're gonna to slowly start lifting our hips up off our heels. And the slower you go, the more intense work through the glutes, through the quads, until we start to lift the hips all the way up and over your knees. You'll just be in a neutral pelvis, so you're not trying to push your pelvis way forward. So it might feel like the butt sticks out just a little bit, but no change here in your rib cage. And then as if someone's holding your butt up, you're slowly going to start to sit back down towards your heels. So there's always a sense of control. You're not just dropping, you're pushing the legs down into the ground. And then again, slowly start to lift up. And this time as you lift up, step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. Good. 
Now, you can put your hands on your front leg or your arms out in front of you. Right now, what's kind of important here is that you're not moving your belly and your ribs forward. So we're gonna try to keep this area real still and we're just gonna pulse a little bit, forward and back, feeling the front knee move and your left thigh, the front of your left hip. And we're just creating a little pulse here, getting some nice flexion in that front hip without impinging it, but mostly feeling a little bit more opening through this left thigh, quadricep. Couple more. Good. And then pulse back to center. Slide that right leg back. You can play with balance. And you can choose toes tucked under or feet pointed. And we're going to slowly lower those hips back down. And as you move, just notice if there's any little changes or differences side to side. And then again, slowly start lifting your hips up. And as you come up, step the left foot forward. And again, trying to stabilize the torso. So it's easy, a lot of people might, when you go forward, go into a back bend like this. I wanna see if you can resist that. So we're really just working the legs and the hips, and we're pulsing. However far forward you wanna go, it's up to you. Maybe you coordinate the movement with your breath or you just notice how you're breathing, noticing the sensations in your body, where do you feel the sense of elongating, the stretch, where do you feel a sense of maybe a shortening, a contraction. And then slowly sliding that left leg back, and then once again, slow as you descend and lower the hips. And then pause for a moment and notice if there's change. And then again, inhale, slow, start to rise up and step that right foot forward again. This time come forward and put your left hand down on the ground. If you need to make any adjustments with your stance like me, please do. If you have a block and you need to use the block for your hand, that's fine right hand to the inside of your right leg and you're just going to pulse that leg out a little bit and as it pulses out if you want you can pulse that left hip down so there's a movement that goes out with the right knee down with the left hip and then back to center and then pulsing up, stretch your right leg straight. Come on to your right heel. Again, if you need to adjust your feet, your legs, please do so. And for this one, let's work a little bit more on internally rotating the right leg. So taking the hands to the inside of your right leg and slowly try to turn your right leg in so the, the right foot will feel like it's moving, the toes moving to your left but make it less about your foot and more about your leg. Your hip, your right buttocks is gonna lift and stick out to the right. And then press the inside of your right heel down and give a little drag, like pressing into the ground and towards your hip. Feeling the inside edge of your leg all the way up into the hip. You know, firing up, engaging. Feeling the back of your leg, the back of your hip stretching more. If you like, you can start to sit the hip back a little and again, pulse a little bit with the hips. You know, back and forwards. And then inhale, come back to center, bend the front knee, lift the hands and then take that right leg back to your kneeling and slowly lowering the hips down just notice how the, the legs, the hips start to move through space. If it feels less sticky, smoother, easier, maybe not, maybe a little bit more challenged. Slowly lift the hips back up and step the left foot forward. 
and lunge. You can always put a block down, put your hand down, left hand inside that left thigh, and you're pulsing that leg out, and you're free to explore moving your hips down and back as you pulse that thigh, that knee. And then pulse up and stretch the hips back, left leg straight. Take your hands inside your left leg so you're walking a little to the right. And then feeling here, you know, pause. I always love to feel the difference in my sides, get a sense of tuning in, what does this side need or how. And then let's play with turning the left leg in. So we want to try to spin the whole leg all the way up into the hip. And then really pressing the inside of your left heel down, but you're trying to push it down a few feet into the ground and then pulling back towards the hip. Maybe you feel a little bit of a tremble. Inhale, walk the hands back, bend your front leg. Lift your hands and sliding that left leg back. Exhale, slowly lowering those hips down. Then close your eyes and start to notice how the legs, the front, the sides, the back, the back of the hips, even the knees and the ankles are feeling. And then placing your hands down on the floor near the front of your mat, tucking your toes under, lift up and back into down dog. Just keep the knees bent here. Push down through the pads of your toes, the balls of your toes. It's okay if the heels are lifting. You'd be rooting down through the center of the heel. With the knees bent, imagine you can push your knees forward as you push your hips back and up. So the hamstrings get a nice lengthening effect even with the knees bent, but your pelvis is more neutral. So you're not rounded in the back, but you're able to arch and get your pelvis to really lift a little higher. You'll feel those hamstrings firing up, those glutes, and as they lengthen. Uh, walk your hands back to your feet, push your heels down, keep the knees bent, and then just sit the hips way back. So ask these posterior muscles that you just lengthened to engage a lot. And as they engage to even pull these areas of your hip flexors down towards the floor more, into the hip socket. So it's moving from your knee into the hip and down towards the ground, but your pelvis, your sitting bones are lifting up. And then pushing down through your feet, fingertips or hands on the ground, try to stretch the legs as straight as you can without changing the shape of the pelvis as it was. So again, it's okay for the knees to be bent. I think there's a common misconception that you can't stretch your legs, the hamstrings, or you're not doing yoga if your legs are bent. The leg bending isn't so much about decreasing the hamstring stretch as much as it is about disconnecting the whole chain of your posterior side means that when you bend your knees, you split that chain into two pieces rather than one. So that's all. So for me, I often have my knees bent a little bit. If I stretch my legs a little straighter, I'm going to feel my calves more. Then walking your hands forward. Imagine someone's holding your hips back as you walk your hands into down dog. There's a little sense of resistance. And 
and then walking your feet forward. See how straight you can keep the legs, or more how high you can keep your hips as you push your hands down. Bending your knees, sitting your hips back with control, start to lower your hips. So a nice way I think of control is you can stop at any time, you can come up, you can go down, and start to lower your hips as far back and down as you can. So if you stop here, that's fine. If you can go a little lower, go for it. And then with your elbows inside your legs, palms together, arms up, just start to move your legs, your knees, pushing them out a little bit. And then push both at the same time. Push your legs in against your arms. And then putting the hands back down, slow, pushing down through your feet. Start lifting your butt way up towards the sky, folding forward. Inhale. And on an exhale, step your left foot back and then lower the knee down. Lift your hands up. Now, I like to put my hands out in front of me. You can put your hand on your front leg or sometimes even holding your trunk like you saw me doing earlier. We're going to do a similar kind of move with our left thigh. So without moving the trunk into a back bend, start to stretch your left thigh and hip forward. And then if you can, lift your left foot up. So it's a real active engagement in your hamstring. If you can reach back, hold the foot. Nice thigh stretch here. So the stretch is on the front of that left leg. Keep the trunk real strong and stable and then try to go as far forward as you can. Even think, I'm dragging my left knee forward. Keep the butt engaged. Exhale, with control, let go with that left foot. Place your hands down, and then step your left foot forward. Exhale, step your right leg back, lower that right thigh, that right knee. Hands, arms in front of you, arms wherever it's comfortable for you. All right? So again, it's easy to want to go like this as we go forward. Try to resist the movement of your trunk as you move forward in that thigh and then actively squeeze that right heel to your butt and you can reach back. If you find yourself extending, just engage the belly, push, pushing that right knee down and try to drag or can get a heavy object forward. And then you listen. What does my breath tell me? Am I fighting with myself? Breathing hard, breathing heavy, breathing through my mouth, trying to run away from myself, or am I connecting to myself? Listening, receiving, letting the change happen even if it's difficult. With control, let go of that right foot, place the hands, and then step forward. And separating your feet as you like, fold. You can bend the knees too. You're listening. What is the most appropriate place to place my body where I feel a challenge, a growth, a stretch? It's not too comfortable, but it's certainly not putting me into a place of, of panic or fight or flight. Inhale. Push down through your feet and stand up. Separate your feet, take a wide stance. Then exhale, fold forward into a wide-legged forward bend, Prasarta Padottanasana. Now, if it's more challenging, real hard to touch the ground, or you feel real rounded, walk the hands forward, little bend in the knees, and then just rock forwards and back. You know, give the body some movement to try to like almost lull it the way you might relax at night. If it feels more accessible in the back of the legs, 
See if you can start lowering your torso, your head. Again, without creating so much flexion or extension in the spine, you're flexing at the front of your pelvis, your hips. Wherever you are, inhale, simply stretch your arms straight, and then start bending your left leg. Try to keep your left heel down, and try to keep your right foot down. You can drag your right foot isometrically towards the left, really getting the inside of that leg oh, mm, to fire up. Inhale back up. And then over to the other side. Sit way back. Heel stays down. Press the left foot down and drag it towards that right foot. Inhale, come back up. And then once again, fold. Inhale. Push down through your feet and stand up. Turn your right foot open. Triangle pose. Exhale, keeping both legs straight. Touch your fingertips inside your right leg like you did earlier in the runner stretch or outside, and you can always use a block. It's nice to have something to press down with that right hand though. So holding it against your leg or just in middle air, I'd rather you use the block if that's the case. Left hand to the sky, and then you can play. What does it feel like to push my feet down and pull them apart? Or to push my feet down and pull them towards each other? Well, options. What does it feel like to try to turn my legs in? Where does my pelvis go? Does my torso change? What about if I try to turn my legs out? What do I feel in my legs and where? Now just kind of play where you feel like an even balance of tension all around your legs. So the legs feel like there's a harmony. You know, if you were an instrument and you plucked the string, it would be in tune. So it's not about pulling as hard as you can on one side. The instrument doesn't make a good sound. Exhale, look down, place the hands down, step back to down dog. Notice the sensations in the legs. Maybe there's a light feeling, a fluid feeling, a grounded feeling. Step your left foot forward. Come all the way up. Open your arms. And then triangle pose to the left. Again, you might be inside your foot, outside your foot. You could be up on a block. Right arm to the sky. If you have impingement in the front here of this left hip, rise up a little bit so that you can get out of that impingement. If you have a lot of strain on the back of the leg, particularly the back of the knee, put a little bend in that knee. And you can play again, just like you did before. What would it be like to push my feet away from each other or to pull them towards each other? or to pull one foot towards it and the other one away, or to lean and turn in a little, or to lean and turn out, or to push the arms away from each other even more, to open the eyes, to close the eyes. And the way that you can know if your instrument sounds or feels or is in the right harmony tune is to Tune into the way you breathe. Can you breathe quiet and soft with your diaphragm? 
Do you notice if you're using your facial muscles or your chest to breathe? Exhale, touch the floor, step back into down dog. Walk your feet forward. Again, you can play with your legs being straight, your hips staying high. Find the distance for your feet that feels right, how you like to turn your feet, and then fold. And just notice the areas on the legs. Perhaps you do feel more of an intense stretch on the back side. That would be normal. But notice if you can create tone and engagement through the front side that helps actually to release the muscles on the back. And if there's any difference through your legs, the inside, the outside, the front, the back, the ankles, the feet, the knees and hips, And then walking your feet once again, last time, back to down dog. Lower your knees down. Bring your feet together, knees apart, and sit back into your child's pose. Rest right here. And if it's not comfortable in this position to rest, just change. You know, find a different position where you can, for a couple minutes, explore your breathing, your body relaxing, and what relaxation feels like. Does your body get warm? Do the muscles feel like they release almost like a gel kind of state? Think of the viscosity of blood as the kind of liquid inside the cells, inside the body, the muscles. What's the texture of the interior, invisible like? What kind of sensations do you feel through your legs, your hips? And how does that change affect things like your belly? the organs. Your diaphragm, your respiration. And all this flow, all this movement, what is your heart like? Maybe if you get quiet enough, you can feel here the pumping of your heart throughout the body, the pulse.
and feel how connected you are, how receptive all of these different shifts, these transformations, the changes that you guided your body in, how you welcome them, integrate them, how the change becomes something that lasts. Whenever you're ready, there's never a rush. You can simply rise from that child's pose and take a moment to marvel in what a little bit of time can do for your energy. And when you have more energy, the return on the time taken is so much greater. Your palms in front of your heart. Appreciate and honor your time and energy. Namaste.